rocks have, the melodies basically go sequentially up. So it's like a scale, in each level there's a scale. So in this one, on the pyramids, the, uh, each of the blocks has a note attached to it. It's a single note. And very sparse melodies on the ball, so they only play something very occasionally. But basically when, it, when they hit it, each row has the notes in one octave going up in a particular scale. So there's fewer. Oh, yeah, don't. It starts off with, the regular, <laughs> with regular notes, and then it goes to a pentatonic scale, and then finally, the very last one resolves the whole scale. So when it kind of goes to a movement, and it hits the last one, it'll kind of, you know, hit the dough and, and resolve the whole thing. This piece is that it starts off completely symmetric. Everything comes, comes in and it stays symmetrical for a while until the rounding error kicks in. And then it turns chaotic. When it gets off of its symmetry, and then it just goes anywhere. And now it's in, now it's in the part of it where it's going anywhere. Now if we restart it, you'll see it from the very beginning where it starts symmetrical. I'll, I'll restart it. So I've got it when the subwoofers are playing, so you can hear most of that. So you can see how symmetrical it is. Now that, that one gets stuck up on the top outside the universe. And you can see that it's basically making these duet chords, which is pairs of notes. So it's actually, you know, everything's everything's harmonious until the rounding error kicks in, and then it's no longer symmetrical. So that one bounced off to the sides. The symmetry is now broken, and uh, it's basically chaotic. Because it's not always yeah, it's just a little awful, you know, whether it's the um, rounding errors or just the chaoticness of the equations that's doing it, it always comes out very, very, you know, from a composer's perspective, it's like composing with randomness. From the mathematical perspective, it's always determined, because it actually comes out the same every time. And having looked at it for two months, I can tell you exactly what this is going to do. You know, well, at least up to the chaotic point. And then I, you know, it's like, I don't really know. Um, nice. Thank you. So do you find the music was more pleasing? Because I know that that was one of the things that you said you were, you were after. It's not just the, the mathematical part of it. It's, it's a little bit of that, that quality of, of, of total agreement. Do you, do you think people find it pleasurable? Um, I've talked to a lot of people who like it. Who yeah. say, you know, I don't usually go for that experimental music stuff. This is kind of nice. Yeah. I've had that experience with other of my pieces as well. You know, for me, a big criterion for doing experimental music is that I have to like it. And I don't have a degree in experimental music, so that means that, you know, when I like it, it's probably going to be somewhat less. I'm weird, but maybe not that weird. <laughs> um, I, I do like a lot of randomness and I like a lot of dissonance, but I tend to temper it quite a bit. And I like lyrical passages. And you know, what, what I really like, I've been, doing, I've been composing for randomness for a while, and I really like those poignant moments when it, kind of a melody starts to make sense. And it's like something happens, it goes there, and then it's just poignant to something. And that's what I really like. Oh, we're being distracted. Interact with? Ah. Not sure what's going on there. Distraction by a double double dipole uh, <laughs> uh, lightsaber. Return of the Jedi. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. So I'm going to play another one, and this is one where the symmetry is going to be there for a while until the until the until the rounding error kicks in. Okay. So in this one, everything's symmetrical. The, the one in the middle is held in place by the symmetrical gravity of everything else. And everything's perfectly symmetrical. Now if there were no rounding errors and there was no errors in the equations, you know, this doing numerical simulation of this is inherently errorful, it would basically oscillate like that forever. But you'll see that after four or five oscillations, it gets slightly off. 
And now it's completely chaotic. It's completely unpredictable. When it's perfectly symmetric, everything's always the same. And I actually made, I, I, I did the music for this one so that it would play, because I, I saw it going five times together. And I did the music so it would play five chords and then get chaotic. So it plays particular chords in a particular chord progression. And then it's all hell breaks loose and you don't know what the hell's going on. But I still had to make it so that it still sounded good after that. So that took a lot of tweaking of, the, of those chords. Oh, I love wow. that. This is such a great algorithm because it gains energy when it interacts and yet it slows as it, yeah, and so, then it has an orbital, uh, like those two right there, uh -huh. they have they, an they, orbital they, they, they make little, little binary oh, yeah. systems. So the algorithm itself actually is known not to conserve momentum. Okay. And the way that works is that it's, it's a discrete algorithm, which means it works every every cycle through. It advances time a certain amount. So that means something will move a little bit. And if it moves over to a place that's very close to something, okay, very small distance, um, so that means the inverse square of that distance is a very large number and it goes shooting off. So and so basically, it, it's a uh, it's a second order Euler equations that run this. Which when you do those discreetly, with it's it's known to gain energy in the system. So so I implemented friction. It's like there's ether friction. All right, it's a fictional concept. Good ether friction. So, so I didn't actually make up a theory of ether friction. I mean, it's, I'm just teasing. I, I was just re reading a. I uh, mix up all the time. I was just reading a steampunk book. You know when they're flying. You know, in, in the 1800s, they discovered space flight. Actually, they did it with spaceships that, that flap their wings and pressure against the ether and use the ether friction to move. So what this is actually, I actually did the algorithm before. I called it ether friction. Every every cycle, I will multiply the velocities by a constant. So like if that's 0.995, that means every time they slow down by a half a percent. And it's it's settable on a per world basis. Some world have a lot of friction, some have less friction, depending on, on whether they need it, you know, tune that. What determines whether they need it? Um, the I, visual aspect I look at it, it and if yeah. they're moving too fast, I, I crank up the friction. Good, so that's your art. That's the yeah. art part of yeah, your well, science. Well, I'll show you, I'll show you. I'll show you. This show, I call it Yuri's Pinwheel. I know, I saw so it, it. So it starts off. It starts off with four of these pinwheels, and they basically go. And you, you'll notice they're all getting smaller. They all mutators on them to make them small. And uh, what happens is they they lose mass very quickly because of the mutators. What a mutator does is it says if if one of the balls is declared as a mutator, anything it hits it will change its mass. You tell it to say uh, what what odds are of changing it and what the percents are. And this one's it's tuned so that it shrinks everything it hits. When it shrinks down to one pixel, there was a bug in the algorithm that I happened to, to print the pixel on the background instead of the foreground, so you get these trails. <laughs> That's awesome. I liked it so much, I made it a feature, not yeah, a bug. I love it. Um, so in this one, if I turn the friction up, all right, they won't collide very much, and they'll all kind of coalesce in the center and just kind of go ba ding, ba ding, 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 ding. <laughs> So if I turn the friction down, they won't. They'll take longer and won't right. do that. So it'll last longer we'll before it degenerates. However, if you turn the friction down too much, all those crooked lines, they go, they get going really fast, and they're all. You see the straight lines behind them. Yeah. All of the lines are straight, and it's boring. But when the friction is at the right level, they're slow enough so that the gravity interactions can make them turn in interesting paths. Okay. 